purpose of this video is to create a FIFO, first in, first out sales report generated on Google Sheets of your stocks, currency, e currency. Now, I'm not a tax professional, I'm not a consultant of any type, I have no professional training in this. I do have a math degree, I have a pre engineering degree, but I'm not even a computer scientist. I'm just doing this for educational, informational purposes only. Now to get started, open up Chrome, click this URL, it's going to be in, down in the description, go here, press these three dots, press copy lines, now press all these dots up here, go to your Google Sheets, open up a new spreadsheet, click tools, click script editor, delete this stuff, paste it all in, save, title it, whatever you want, FIFO, and boom, it's ready to be used in a sheet, equal FIFO, creates first and first out sales list of stock currency, boom, easy as that. But in order to get FIFO to work correctly, you need to have an input, you need 10 things, you need an account, you need transaction date, trade ID, quantity units, trade quantity, trade units, blah, 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 whatever, you can don't even need to label these the same thing, they just need to be what they need to be. And what do they need to be? This is needs to be the account name, whatever account name you're buying it from, transaction date, Go down to input rules. The date formats can be like that. The date format can be like that. It can be whatever format you want. If it doesn't work, don't use that format. If it does work, use that format. And trade ID, it's going to come with a trade ID. Quantity, it needs a quantity. Look down here, buying or selling, trade. One of them should be negative. Well, what makes sense? If you're buying one of these, you're spending $50. That should be negative there. If you're selling one, you're getting $100 in return. That's positive. That makes sense. Buy, sell. Fees here, zero. Robinhood, of course. USD. Makes sense. And down here is the output. Here's the FIFO. The ones one I'll explain later, but basically you just selected all that range right there. And it shows what account is being sold out of. You sold one out of Robinhood, MU. And it shows date acquired, date sold, what term it is, proceeds, cost basis, gain, loss, and totals it up for you. Now, this is the information you need for Form 8949 on the US taxes. Like I said, I am not a professional. Don't use this to actually follow your taxes. This is for informational purposes only. Get a professional. All right, our next example is selling batches of stocks. So you buy two micro stock for $100 a month later, you buy another one for $60 and sell three months later for $200. This is the input of what that would look like. Buy two, one, sell three. Some things are case sensitive. I could improve that, but look, if Robinhood is capitalized there, don't go down here and not capitalize it. That's stupid. Just keep it the same. You know, keep the stocks the same, the units, the buys, keep them all the same. Right now, the default base currency is USD. It's just not going to work with other stuff right now. To display individual cells, input one for batch and input zero for batch if you want to see them grouped up. Now what that means is batched equals one, it'll show them split up to one. Now in real life, you sold all three at the same time. Now in the FIFO way of accounting, you sold the first one you got first and then the second one. And that's what it's looking like here. Now if batch is zero, it's going to show them grouped up. It's going to show they sold three. It's going to have various dates acquired, but the, both of the terms are short. So the next example is a mix of short and long term in a batch sell. So you want to buy one micro stock and then a month later you buy two and 12 months later you sell three. Uh, so if sorted is one, then it's going to display them in the list like it has been. And if sorted is zero, it's going to separate them. Now sorted is the third parameter in the FIFO thing is this one right here. If you click here, you can see batch and sorted. Now to be considered long term, it has to be the sell must be made on the day after a year past the acquisition date. So if we change this up by one day, then we won't have a mix of short and long. They'll both be long term as such. The next example is handling fees. So it doesn't work like this, but for simplicity, let's say you buy two Bitcoin and paid a fee of $2. You bought another one and paid a $1 fee, and then you sold all three of them for $3. Now you paid a total of $6 for fees, and that is going to be included in the cost of basis. Now these fees can be input as positive or negative. It will fix that for you. By default, it will not display the fees, but if you set the parameter to one here, it will display the fee. Now if you put batch to one, it'll show a more clear breakdown of the fees. You paid $2 to buy these two Bitcoin and you paid two to sell them for a total of four and one and one for the one for a total of two, making a grand total of six. You can see it here included in the cost basis. 
The next example is the same as before, but you only sell two and a half Bitcoin. So you have a total of six dollars in fees here, but you only pay a total of five fifty because you still have fifty cents associated with this Bitcoin that you still have in your property that's going to be associated with that half Bitcoin's cost basis. And here you can see we have three dollars total split five ways. That's two forty for this and sixty cents for that, and which will give you a total of five fifty. The next example is transfers and fees. So it's the same as before, but now you pay a $4 fee for transferring it into a wallet before you sell it. So we have in the description, transfer to wallet. That's negative over here because it's coming out of this account. Here we have transfer from Coinbase and the quantity is positive because it's going into this account. The transfer description should be transfer to account and this is also case sensitive. Transfer to account name that is. So whatever it says over there, it should say there. The transfer trade quantity should be zero. Fees paid to transfer will also be added to the cost basis. The fee breakdown displays in chronological order. First the buy fee, then the first transfer fee, second transfer fee, so on until the sell fee. Transfer dates, previous accounts, and transfer IDs will also be displayed in chronological order. We can see here the $4 transfer fee was split between the two amounts. Now the next example is basically the same exact thing but without the transfer from line just really showing you it doesn't require the transfer from line description only the transfer to wallet and it'll handle both of them now it doesn't matter if it, the transfer from is in there it's fine to be in there but this is just showing that it doesn't need it the next example has even more transfers it's the same as before except now you transfer it to wallet 2 for six dollars and then you transfer it back to coinbase for seven dollars and you sell it on coinbase and spend eight dollars a total of $36 in fees. So here we see we've sold all three of the Bitcoin we originally bought here and we are paying the total sum of the fees of $36 which is included in the cost basis. The transfer breakdown is a lot longer. If you pull these out, if you make these columns a little bit wider you can see it has tracked each account that it went through and the transfer IDs that are associated with those and it shows the fee breakdown throughout. The next example is just the fees in terms of Bitcoin. Now this uses a function FMV bear market value that uses the Coinbase API to look up the price on a specific date. It's looking up the spot price. So FMV of this day for BTC for Bitcoin. If I do $2 divided by that, that's going to give me the amount of Bitcoin that equals $2. So the prices of these Bitcoin fees are going to be the same as they were before. One limitation in using this is it only allows up to 200, I believe, requests or pulls per day to look that fair market value up. So if you have a really long sheet with a lot of fair market value conversions, currently this function I've created is not going to support all that input. Hopefully sometime in the future, the fair market value function will be more robust to allow more pulls off the internet for more cryptocurrencies and even stocks but right now it is limited to the coins offered on Coinbase. Next example is trading cryptocurrencies. So you buy 0.1 Bitcoin with 1300 USD, then buy one Ethereum ETH with 0.1 Bitcoin, then you sell one ETH for $1,000. Uh, we're not using USD in the exchange. We need one transaction line for the sell and one for the buy, the function FIFO. Oh yeah, this could probably improve to just use one of the lines, but for right now it needs both lines. So let's come down here and we see things go according to plan except for here right here the fees paid will be applied to the cost basis of the sell and not the purchase so when we bought the ETH the fee applied there was just zero minus one I'm not 100% sure about this should they be split should it go to the sell I wasn't sure right now this is set up to apply that fee only to the sell of the Bitcoin if there's someone who is 100% sure, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, next example is uh, using Bitcoin as income and then using it to pay an expense. So here we get 0.1 Bitcoin as income and then again and then we use 0.15 to use it as an expense. Uh, over here we have the fair market value of the Bitcoin at the time, which is what is used to determine the cost basis and the proceeds for income and expense. So the next example is uh, receiving and giving away Bitcoin. So you receive one Bitcoin as a gift without knowing the cost basis. You sell half of it short term. 
sell 0.25 long term and then give the rest away as a gift. So when receiving a gift with an unknown cost basis, you would input just gift in the description. When giving a gift, input gift as well. Input zero for trade quantity with gifts. By default, the gift parameter in the function is zero, so it's not going to show. It's going to hide the display of gifts. If you want to show your display, you set that input to one. When receiving a gift of unknown tax basis, you have to assume the cost basis is zero and the tax basis date will be the date received. The next example is the same as before, but with a known cost basis. And we know that the giver purchased the Bitcoin for $5,000 on this date. So that's how we're going to input it in the description, separated by commas. This date and costs is the cost basis that we will inherit with the gift. And if we compare the uh, cost basis here, $9 is just the fees versus $5,009. It's obvious that it's better to know what the cost basis is. All right, just a couple more and then that's all the examples. This one's receiving dividends from SOC. So we get 100 stocks of MDU for $4,000 and we don't do anything with it. We just collect dividends and then we sell it all for the same amount later. When receiving dividends, make sure zero is in the quantity and input the amount of dividends in the trade quantity and then have that description be dividend and the symbol. By default, it's not gonna show it, but if you input one for the dividends parameter, it will display it, which is this one right there. And you can see the dividends show up right here. The next example is the same, but you're gonna sell a little bit of MDU intermittently and the dividends are probably gonna go down, but you're still selling it for the same price you bought it at. And thus, uh, this is the last example and so all of our description options we went through, you can do buy symbol, sell symbol, transfer to, gift, gift with the known, cost basis, income, expense, or dividend, and then the symbol. Okay, and lastly, I just wanna look at all the different ways you can format it. So this is just a combination of some from above. I'm gonna zoom out and um, so we can get a better look at this. So if I go down here and say equal FIFO, select this whole range, hit enter, then here's what the results look like. Pretty boring. So what I've done is created a formatter in here. Go to the top. You're going to put the sheet name that you're using. My sheet name is called All Trades. And my start row is 520. And um, select on open and just hit run. And this formatter takes a moment to complete, which is why I went ahead and have already done them. So this is what it looks like if all you do is put the input for the range. The next example displays GIFs. We have the range selected, zero, which means it's gonna come out batched. So various is gonna be down here. Zero for sorted, so it's gonna be all sorted up between the short-term, long-term, and GIFs categories, and then one is displaying GIFs. One thing you'll notice is it's not going to say a gain or a loss for your gift. You can just figure that out. It's going to add these to the totals with proceeds and cost basis compared to previous where it's not displaying any of the gifts, even though it's doing the same thing behind the scenes. Okay, now let's look at what happens when you show the dividends. Well, you just put one in for dividends and fees. And this is what it looks like. Shows you made $62.50 in dividends, you paid $51 in fees, and other than that, it stayed exactly the same. Now, if you want to show a return on investment percentage, you just put one in for the next parameter. See? There it is, ROI, return on investment. And here's the new column you got, and it shows your return on investment for everything. You have 37% increase over here. You had twenty thousand dollars. You got twenty-eight. Here you lost twenty-six percent. It shows that you lost money here, giving away your Bitcoin. And for all these trades, you have minus 0.96. You lost one percentage almost on all of these trades. This grand total percentage does not include the gain or loss from the gifts. Only the trades, short and long term. In addition, you got a dividend ROI column now and a total ROI, that, which includes your gain or loss plus the dividend, which makes total ROI. We can see we got a 0.31% dividend return on investment, which brings this slightly higher. No dividends in the short term. 
which makes our total loss slightly lower. Now, one thing you might notice is how boring this is looking. So what you do is you go into this again, and if you forgot how to get there, tools, script editor, opens this, select on open, make sure the start row is the start row you want and the sheet name. Uh, you go down here and change these from zero to one, hit run, and that's gonna give you these green and red shadings for everything that's important. They're split into two, so you can do just the percentages or, or just the quantities. This short-term ROI is ridiculous. If you do want those shown, then just put a one in for the next parameter, and if you don't, put a zero in for that right here, and this is what it's gonna look like without the short-term annual percentages showing. The next parameter will just shorten the headers for you. Right here, put a one there, and you'll get these shortened abbreviated headers. This is almost all the information that's going to be shown, except for right here, the batch parameter. So if we change the batch parameter to 1, let's see what all the information looks like. Zoom out. And here it is in all of its glory. Zoom back in. The last three parameters are filters for date and accounts. So here, I've just filtered for 2018, and it's just going to show everything from 2018. It looks like there's only short-term trades in that year. And this is 2018, just showing Coinbase. And this is one if we add Wallet and Wallet2. Wallet is the only one being displayed because there was no trades out of Wallet2 that year. So I've showed you a bunch of examples of, of how this FIFA function works. In the next video, I'll show you more about how to generate the input range to make that a little easier for you.